if you are new here we are excited to have you here we have a routine of how we to our videos um so first of all you say hello let us know where you are watching from um and then of course you give the video a like because a it is free and b it helps to motivate me and it also helps with the algorithm so that when youtube sees there's a lot of activity going on in a video it shares the video to a lot more people which means more of us can benefit so um i encourage you to uh, let me know also if you have any comments uh, please leave them in the comment section below i will be happy to answer them if you're going to be watching this video after the live um any links i will talk about will be uh, you can be able to access them in the live chat section of the video so just click on replay live chat and you'll be able to access the video so without much further ado as you have seen in the title of the video we are going to be looking at cruise ship jobs resumes and cruise ship job um, cv format depending on how you want to look at it and um, if you haven't watched the previous video before this in this series i was talking about the c1 visa and why you should consider applying for it especially if you are looking for a sponsored work visa um, for the United States because it is one of the easiest visas to apply for and very very easy to get it Next video in this series. I'm going to be talking about uh, Most frequently asked questions for your C1D visa, which is the visa you need if you get a job on a cruise ship and um, For those who are wondering Eva, why are you talking so much about cruise ships is because um, first of all the cruise ships are currently hiring summer is just approaching and they are hiring worldwide as long as you can speak english most of the jobs are entry level which means you just require a high school diploma you do not require any experience do not require any educational um, um, credentials so they're very easy to apply for and that's why i am talking a lot about them and of course the green card lottery just happened and um, not everyone was successful but a lot more people still want to visit the u.s so this is one of the pathways you can consider. So when you are applying for a cruise ship job, just like any other job for that matter, your CV is your first impression because um, most of these um, cruise ship companies do not, um, are not based, let's say in Africa or in Asia or whatever they may be. So you're most probably gonna be having your CV go ahead of you and then go through several maybe two or three different people before you actually get an interview so this is like your first impression and it is essential to understand the format and strategies that can help your cvs to stand out from the competition so i want to show you something um on one of those cruise ship um company website so this particular website gri this one here so gri is a company that hires for um, I think is Norwegian Cruise Line I think but it's based in South Africa and I was looking at this um, page here you I just want us to research you can understand why it's important for your CV to stand out you can see here your resume six second yikes the reality is that recruiters have a ton of resumes to sort through so they need to weed them out quickly that's why each one gets six seconds this means that a resume writer needs to capture their attention and stand out in a good way in six seconds. If this happens, perhaps the review can be extended to 10 or 15 seconds, which allows the candidate enough time to tell their story a bit and hopefully make the maybe pile instead of being consigned to the trash bin. So if you are looking for a challenging and rewarding career at sea, apply today. Guys, that is from a company that recruits for, um, let me just check it here. They recruit for, uh, um, okay, I don't even know. They, they recruit for several cruise ship companies, but um, they are the main one for um, the Norwegian cruise line. So guys, that's how important making sure your CV is giving you the best impression right from the beginning. However, there's something I want us to talk about before we even get to having your CV, getting those six seconds and hopefully getting the 15 seconds. And I'm um, going to talk about what we call ATS. ATS basically stands for Application Tracking System. So let me just open something else here. 
so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so basically, ATS is like, let's say it's like, a, I would consider it like an AI, artificial intelligence, that helps recruiters to do the initial weeding of the CV. So you know these days, if you have tried to apply for any of the, what can I call it? If you have tried to apply for any of the cruise ship jobs or any other job for that matter, you will notice that most of them just give you a button that you just click and say apply now. So that means a lot of people are able to apply for CVs, I mean for jobs on cruise ships, within a shorter time than they were able to in the past. So that means recruiters are getting a lot more job applications than they would if people didn't apply online. Hence where this ATS comes in. So the ATS or the application tracking system is what many companies, including cruise lines, use to manage the recruitment process. So what these ATS systems do? They are online systems. What I was trying to look for one um, job, but I don't know if I'm going to find it. Let me see if I'll find it. Oh, let me see. So what the ATS does, basically, it um, the ATS helps the recruiter to scan your CV for relevant keywords and phrases to determine if they meet the job requirements. And what that means is that, let's say if I'm applying for the job of uh, photography training, for example, in fact, I found one, let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is just one example, yeah? So this is a job on uh, um, uh, Carnival. You can see here, photographer training online application. If you peep clearly, you can see, so I've clicked on the apply. You can see right there, shipjobs.carnival.com slash ATS. I hope you guys see that. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So let's dive a little bit deeper into what this ATS is all about and what it implies for you who is job seeking. So as I've said, many companies, including cruise lines, use application tracking system. That is the ATS you have just seen on that particular website there to manage the recruitment process. So what this ATS essentially does is that it will scan your CV. The moment you submit your application online, the ATS is gonna scan your CV or your resume for relevant keywords and phrases to determine if you meet the job requirements and if you're worth being forward to the next step, which is a recruitment agency. And guys, this is what happens, whether you're applying for a job in Canada, whether you're applying for a job in Australia, US, Whatever you are applying for a job, this is a process your CV is going to go through for most reputable large companies. So what you need to do to increase your chances of getting past the ATS, that is the hardest hurdle. You need to make sure that your CV can actually go behind this robot, can go behind this ATS system, can go behind this artificial intelligence platform and get to a human being. And who is a recruiter who, as we have just seen, is just going to give you six seconds and if you're lucky they're going to give you another 10 to 15 seconds so to increase your chances of getting past the ats and reaching a human recruiter make sure you're using relevant keywords from the job description in your cv so let's continue with this example of um now let me look at another example which i think will be more helpful that i'd opened eh? mm, yes let's look at this example so i have this um particular job on, uh, you can see it here on MSC Cruises. You can see they are looking for a laundry attendant for Explorer Journeys. Guys, by the way, you can apply for this job if you have the experience. You can see here, these are the key accountability. So main accountability is basically just means the job description. You can see what they have here, maintains and reports the functionality of the entire equipment, blah, 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 blah. These are the job description and these are the qualifications yeah so what you want to do is to make sure that when you are preparing your cv you are using keywords that are already in that job description and i'll give you an example of something that i have done so i have i went ahead and prepared a sample cv here you can see here laundry attendant this is the cv that i've decided to prepare you can see what i've done there 
I've just put my name, um, my location, phone number. If you have your LinkedIn profile and it is one that matches the job you're applying for, feel free to add it here. Yeah, you can add it here after your email address. So you can see the professional summary section, what I have done. I'm using the keywords, highly skilled laundry attendant with exp extensive experience in luxury hotel settings in, in Hilton. And the reason I'm doing this is because, guys, if you see in this particular job description, they haven't said, look at the qualifications. They need cruise ship experience in this role. So what I should have done here, maybe what I need to change, is just say experience in a cruise ship, including maybe MSC cruises and whatever. But if you don't have that, you can still apply because sometimes if you're lucky, a recruiter will hire you because you have um, hotel experience. But if you had like um, cruise ship experience, I would just put their extensive experience in cruise ship, including ABCD. But this is for somebody who didn't have, and this is the CV I prepared for them. Yeah, but they have worked in Serena and at the Hilton. And um, in the role of laundry attendant at Explorer Journeys. So what this means, when the ATS will be looking for somebody who has experience, it can clearly tell. You can see I've used the word laundry attendant. I have used Explorer Journeys. I have MSC Malta. And I have all that. So the ATS could just pick my CV by virtue of... Um, sorry, guys, I stay next to a chat, so kindly forgive the noise so um by the time they are gonna um the ATS is gonna sift through this cv they can see that experience is there and then you can see the next thing i have done you can see i have put there familiarity with the cruise ship operations and previous experience in a similar role you remember that was in the cv proficient in operating laundry equipment you can see i am using the keywords in this cv and then you can see in terms, so I started with the skills there. And the reason I'm doing this is so that if I'm fortunate, my CV lands to the human recruiter, those 10 seconds we're talking about are going to be very applicable here. You see, I've put there knowledge of public health standards, PPE. We have it here. You can see I'm just throwing at the, around, where was it? I saw it somewhere. Yeah, you can see here personal protective equipment while on duty. So you can see how I'm cleverly throwing them around here so that they can, um, you know, the ATS can find them. And then we have here the laundry attendant position, Serena Hotel, laundry equipment, blah, 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 blah. I'm putting everything here. And I'm just basically getting things from what we have in that job description, and I'm putting them here. Guys, you can see what I'm doing. And then education, I have just put their high school diploma because that's all they want. If you have training from Utali or whatever, feel free to include it. And then this is the most important part. You can see here, I have put some accomplishments. So this is hopefully that it gets to a human recruiter. Yeah? Received employee of the year recognition in 2021 for consistently maintaining a zero error rate and processing guest laundry requests for three consecutive months. Achieved a guest satisfaction rating of 95% through meticulous handling of guest laundry items and resolving any issues promptly. And then I have reduced laundry processing time by 15% by streamlining sorting and tagging procedures, resulting in improved overall efficiency. So guys, that is just one way of making sure that your CV can go past the ATS system and land on a human recruiter. That is the first step you have to do. If your CV doesn't have the keywords in the job description, there is no way your CV is going to go past the platform. And that's why, guys, sometimes you will find you have been um, uh, working, you have been sending so many CVs and nobody's getting back to you because nobody's even seeing them. And I know some of you will have a question like, let's say, Eva, um, I have, I'm applying for this accounting job, but I've never worked as an accountant. What do I do? And I'm going to give you another example of how you can handle that so let me give you an example of something else um how you can handle that in terms of going back past the ets so here is another you can see right here this is um this opportunity is available at norwegian cruise line they are looking for assistant financial accountant and you can see here these are the roles I manage the onboard credit desk, collect credit card, accept, verify, blah, blah, blah. These are the rules, yeah? And then you can see the requirements are very easy. 
minimum three to five years experience in accounting preferred intermediate to advanced knowledge of microsoft blah 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 fidelio is strongly preferred fidelio is what most restaurants and hotels use and then you can see here bachelor of science degree in accounting and then relevant experience shipboard experience and a minimum of uh, three to five years accounting uh may substitute for the educational requirements so here you can see if you don't have the the education like if you don't have the bachelor of science degree then shipboard experience and accounting experience can work for you so guys when you see such jobs don't ignore and say oh i've never worked on a shipboard why do you can see if you just read the job description keenly you can see that even somebody who's never worked on a cruise ship can still apply for this job so what you want to do when you are preparing your cv in such a case you simply look at the minimum qualifications and make sure you meet them and that's what you're going to highlight at the very top of your cv and then in terms of the essential functions see how you can tailor those functions to your particular situation as let's say an accountant in this particular case so guys, I hope we are together up to that point when it comes to ATS. So number one, we have talked about keywords from the job description. Make sure you have them in your CV. If let's say I'm an accountant and um, the same example, um, we, gonna, we have here where they talk about manage on board credit desk during service hours. That is something any accountant should be able to do. I would put it on my CV, even if I've never done it because it's something I know what to do. And then we have their collect guest credit card registrations and handle changes in credit cards and method of payment that's something i don't even need to go to school to do i would put it there in my cv even if i've never done it so if there's something you've never done but it's related to your line of work and it's something you can do without even needing training the hell please put it in your cv because you need as many of those functions as possible and something else when you are doing your cv let's go back to the example of the assistant financial accountant make sure as you are arranging items on your cv follow the order in which they appear in the job description so when you're doing your duties or whatever you have done make sure they are following this order because most recruiters most organizations they will list um requirements for a job description based on priority and how often you're going to be doing them so you want to make sure they're at the very top of your cv or at the very top of your resume and this guys applies whether it's a cruise ship job resume it's a canadian style resume it's whatever kind of job you are applying for so even as much as you're putting the keywords there in your cv from the job description avoid keyword stuffing and maintain a natural flow in your writing you guys saw how i've done it here for example when i wanted to include the ppes i put it there on my skills and i've put knowledge of public health standards and proper use of personal protective equipment it flows very naturally i'm not just throwing words aimlessly so another way you can ensure that your cv or your resume is ats friendly is by using a natural sorry standard fonts headings and bullet points so guys don't go and use those fancy fonts that you know even you yourself don't understand I usually advocate for something simple, like you see what I've used here. I am using a Times New Roman. You can see it's a very simple um, font. You can use Arial if you want. Other ones I would recommend is Calibri. We have Verdana. Um, we have Cambria, Tahoma. Those basic, simple fonts, they come out very clean. And um, you can see white here. I is, is a very There's a lot of white space on this CV. It's not very stuffed. Things are categorized. And um, like we have bullet points, yeah? Make sure that you have bullet points all over and, um, you know, a lot of white space and categories and, you know, very simple. You can see it's just one page, but um, you can see white here. It's one page, 300 words, but it summarized a lot of information, just what is important. And that's what you want to do to make sure that your your cv is ats friendly something else you want to do is make sure that um if you're sending your cv send it in word because different companies use different ats's 
and some of them might not be able to go through your PDF or whatever other fancy um, format you have saved in your CV. So I encourage you, unless you have been told directly to save your file on PDF, just leave your CV in one format. It's easier for the ATSs to crawl through and identify the necessary keywords. It's also important to note that using fancy or decorative fonts can sometimes result in compatibility issues or make your CV difficult for the ATS to read and parse correctly. So that's why, guys, use simple um, fonts. Just go for MS Word unless they tell you to use something different. And then in terms of format, make it clear, make it concise and easily scannable for both the ATS and human eyes. As I've just shown you, you've seen this one is a very clean, um, very, it's not so wordy and um, whatever it is. So take advantage of headings. You've just seen me they have used headings, um, use bulleted lists. So for example, for me, I like to have an objective or a professional summary section and then have a section on skills, education, experience. And then for the, for the um, references, unless they categorically ask for it, I usually don't put it. I would just say available on request because again, I'm trying to make my CV very short so that remember the main purpose of your CV is to get an interview. That's what you really want to get an interview. And then I've talked about consistent format, formatting, maintain consistency in your font size, in your style, and also in your spacing throughout your CV. So you will notice like in this particular CV, I have used, um, um, what do we, uh, I don't know what to call it, but this is what I used, this one. It's not middle, I don't know what they call this kind of justification, I don't know what they call it. Yeah, I think I've justified it, that's what they call it. So you can see it's, it's very straight on both ends. You can see everything is straight on both ends. So that's what you wanna do. If you wanna go for right, this one is called what? If you wanna go for um, a right, le left alignment, be consistent. But personally, I prefer to use this justify, which again, I don't know, that. that's what they call it. Okay. Something else, you have to keep it relevant. So let's say I have work experience as a bar attendant, I have work experience as a waitress, I have work experience as a laundry attendant. But this particular job I am applying for is a laundry attendant job. Tailor your CV to the specific job you are applying for and include only relevant information. Focus on highlighting skills and experiences that directly align with the requirements of the cruise ship job you are applying for. It doesn't matter if you have worked 50 different jobs, focus your CV on the job you have done and the one you are applying for. This targeted approach enables both the ATS system and human readers to quickly identify your suitability for the position. And then I've talked about white space, leave sufficient white space around sections. White space is just those places where there's not words written on them. And this improves readability and allows both ATS and recruiters to navigate your CV more easily and also avoid cluttered layouts or overcrowding your CV with excessive information. I've talked about um, tailoring your CV to the job description. I won't talk too much about that. And then um, make sure you focus on relevant experience only. And um, sometimes if let's say you have a lot of experience that is relevant, you can focus, instead of focusing on the jobs you did, focus on your achievements, yeah? And then look at any transferable skills that you might have. I've given the example, let's say I only have experience in a hotel, but I'm applying for a cruise ship jobs, cruise ship job. And let's say it's a laundry attendant position. So I have operated and maintained laundry equipment in a high volume luxury hotel. These same skills could be transferred to a cruise ship. So I would include them there on my CV. And then we are talking about personal qualities. If the job um, description is heavy on personal qualities, like this particular one we have looked at here, you can see here, this was the, what job was this? The financial accountant position. You can see in terms of qualification and requirements, very just two. But look at the attributes. It's very heavy on the attributes. 
So make sure then you include a section on attributes on your CV. Let the job description guide you on what to put on your CV. Highlight your personal qualities that align with the requirements of that role so that the ATS will also find it and the recruiter will um, also find you aligned to this particular job. So by emphasizing the relevant experience, transferable skills and personal qualities that align with this particular cruise ship a role, you demonstrate your suitability for the role, even though you do not, you may not have direct cruise ship job experience. Then I've talked about focusing on accomplishments and achievements. So rather than simply listing your job responsibilities, focus on showcasing your accomplishments and achievements. And I've just shown you that using the laundry attendant um, CV that we have just looked at. So. If let's say, for example, you improved customer satisfaction, mention the percentage increase. If you received recognition or awards, re include them like you're the employee of the year. Any relevant training or certifications you may have obtained that are related to what uh, job you are applying for, make sure that you include them. Photos. A lot of you have been asking me about photos. Personally, I encourage you do not put photos unless the recruiter has personally asked for them or it has been included in the job description and this is the reason why while a professional headshot may seem like a good addition cruise ship job sorry cruise ship employers often focus on skills and qualifications rather than your appearance especially at the shortlisting stage so to avoid any bias and maintain fairness during the hiring process it is best to refrain from including a photograph unless the job description has categorically asked for it. And then the other thing you want to do when you're applying for these jobs in the cruise ship, you avoid applying for multiple roles in the same cruise ship company. So while it may be tempting to apply for various positions with the same cruise ship company, it is important to exercise caution. Apply for different roles simultaneously can give the impression of a scattered or undisputed and in decisive candidate. Instead, what you want to do is to carefully choose a specific role that aligns with your skills and experience and then tailor your resume accordingly. By focusing on a specific position, you can demonstrate your dedication and suitability for that role, okay? And then um, something else you wanna do is steer clear of tables, graphics, and figures. So this might look very visually appealing and it might um, work for other industries. For cruise ship companies, it is advisable to avoid them because again, ATS issues and you don't wanna jeopardize your chances. Application tracking system that is ATS commonly used in hiring processes might struggle to read and process such elements in your CV leading to potential formatting issues, and you might just lose out on a job that you are qualified. So I suggest that you opt for a clean and professional format with clear headings, um, bullet points, and um, appropriate spacing to ensure your resume is easily scannable by both the ATS system and human eyes. I've talked about what you need to do if you are preparing your cruise ship resume or job um, application CV with no prior cruise ship or hospitality experience, you need to focus on transferable skills and experiences that you may already have, highlight skills such as customer service, problem solving, teamwork, adaptability. Remember the cruise ship experience is like no other. You're literally going to be working seven days a week for like six to nine months and you're going to be working for up to 10 hours a day. So it's a totally, totally different new environment from what you're probably already used to. So you can talk about your being very adaptable to change and um, you can focus on other volunteer work you may have or any internships that you may have that are relevant for this particular role. Emphasize on your willingness to learn and highlight any personal qualities that align in the cruise ship industry, such as strong work ethic, attention to detail, positive attitude and the like. So for example, if you're doing your CV, you can talk about um, any relevant um, qualifications you have, certifications, experiences, and all that. 
so guys i'm gonna and this video is getting too long so what i'm gonna do i will leave a link in the description box at the bottom of this video you can go and check out the sample cvs for different cruise ship job roles that i've done and i've put them on the website you can go and check them out and see how they can be helpful to you so we have like pastry cook we have chef we have um accountants we have uh, what was the other one galley attendant and so many other cruise ship job cv formats you can go and look at them but if you want like this template that i have used also feel free to um dm me um on instagram or you can find me instagram is ivam tali or you can find me we have a telegram channel travel with ivam tali let me even just put it here for those who may not know but in the description box it is also there you can um find me there i post links to most of these things that i'm talking about um this is the let me put for you the time so this is the link telegram if i'm tally guys you go and join me there i'm tally telegram this is the link and then you can find me on TikTok as well. Let me. Um, I keep forgetting what is my TikTok. Is it Eva Mutali? I think, yeah. TikTok is Eva Mutali. At Eva Mutali. And we have such a vibrant, vibrant community there. So guys, you can follow me on TikTok. It's Eva Mtali. There's so much fun we are going having down there. <laughs> you guys will follow me on TikTok. I've put the link there. If you'll be watching this video after the live, um, you can check the description box. Um, my link is there and also for where to find the resume formats are there. Um, follow me on Telegram. okay so guys um that's pretty much what i wanted to share with you about the cruise ship um job resume and um as i've already mentioned um crafting an impressive ship job cruise ship job cv requires attention to detail tailoring it to the specific job description and showcasing your relevant accomplishments um, by understanding ATS kindly know that before your CV gets to a human recruiter you have to make sure you overcome the hurdle of the ATS I have just shown you if you're watching this in the middle please scroll back at the beginning of the video you will be able to understand what I'm talking about ATS is like a robot it's like a CV robot um, it sifts through your CV looking for relevant keywords and makes a determination to see if they should forward it to a human recruiter. That's the most critical part. When your CV gets to a human recruiter, you have maximum of six seconds for the recruiter to decide if they want to move forward with your CV or not. If they decide to move forward of it, with it, you have like 10 to 15 seconds um, for them to decide if they want to put you in the pool of maybe we should consider. So that's why you make sure like in the shortest time possible, you share all the information that is relevant to showcase and give a case for you. Remember to highlight transferable skills and adaptability, even if you lack prior cruise or hospitality experience. So guys, let me quickly read your comments and then I will call this video to an end. So Jackie is saying, hi, hi, how are you? Elvis is saying, good day, good day to you. I am fine, thank you, Elvis. Leroy is watching from Zimbabwe. Thank you so much for this session, you are welcome um by the way Leroy there is a recruitment company I think it's Carnival Carnival is gonna be in Harare soon I hope you have applied to 
be considered for the recruitment event. You can watch my TikTok videos. I think I've also shared the information on here on the YouTube channel. Please check um, if you're interested. They are gonna be hiring um, almost 600 crew from Zimbabwe. Beth Murray is saying, hi Eva, thanks for being on the lead. As always, keep us informed. Lots of love from Nairobi Kenya. More love right back to you, Mora. Thank you so much. Lawrence is saying references. I don't know what you mean by references. Kindly explain. Next video, come up with visit visa bank statement and landing first time and converting visit visa. Oh, Lawrence, we have very many videos about this. Please check the live um, uh, tab. If you go to the, let me show you. If you go to my YouTube, let me see. And then you click on the live tab. Let me show you where you need to go. This phone is cracked. Please don't judge. <laughs> so here, if you are on this, this is I'm assuming you I'm assuming you have a better phone than mine. So if you click on travel with Ivan Tali, you click here on live. Under live there, just scroll down, you'll find we have so many videos that I talk about landing um, and converting your visit to visa. If you check the videos I shared yesterday, I have shared with you guys so many job openings, especially if you have um, a Canada tourist visa. They are very, very easy to apply for. There's even actually a company in Canada. I've shared the videos. You can go and check under videos. This is not on the live. This is other videos. There's, um, I've shared so many videos here last night. So there's this uh, um, LMA approved farm worker jobs in Canada. This particular employer is even offering relocation. He's covering relocation costs, he's providing accommodation. The job doesn't require any education, no experience. He's gonna provide the training and there are so many, um, what do I call, there are so many positions available. And then there's also another LMI sponsored nanny job in Canada. I've shared the details there on the channel. You can go and check under the video tab. There's also a company that is hiring home support workers. As long as you're in Canada, they are offering LMA. They have so many positions. And then there's also an employer. I think he's in British Columbia. If you have worked in a butchery, like Kukatanyama, that employer has like 20 positions that are open. And um, they are offering LMA as well. So guys, please be watching my videos. I tell you 99.9% .9 of questions being asked. There's already a video for it. You can be sure. So if for whatever reason, even DM me and I don't respond promptly, just go to the video, especially on the lives. I cover a lot, a lot, a lot under the lives. We have so many. I have talked about flag polling, how you can do it, go and once you have your LMIA, go and flag poll and get your visa quickly. So there's a lot of things I've shared with you guys. Please just go and watch Lawrence. Um, Colin says he likes my smile. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. That is so kind of you. I know I have a beautiful smile. It's if you see my smile and you ever saw my mom copyright, like we are like twins. And my other twin sister, you're probably gonna meet her. Um, we'll probably do a live with her in the afternoon, my twin sister. And guys, the three of us, we are like twins, but yeah. Um, Omar says, I am amazing. Thank you so much. You have used my knowledge to apply for work. I am wishing you all the best and I can't wait to hear all the testimonials. Collins is saying, nice work, Eva. I will reward you one day. God bless you. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you. So, guys, um, looks like we don't have any more questions. Please, guys, apply, apply, apply. Um, go to TikTok. That's where we are having all the testimonials. People are getting jobs like crazy. People are getting visas for Canada. People are getting um, their C1D visas. It is crazy, guys. You do not want to be left out. And... Um, Guys, I have been on a 10-day cruise, though, as a passenger. Um, I didn't know too much about what happens for cruise, so I didn't take a lot of time to go and see what exactly happens with the staff. But, guys, it's not as bad as it may sound. And you hardly see water, but I know a lot of you fear the water aspect. It's so much fun. Like, when you're on the cruise ship, you're literally, like, in a house. The one I went on had eight floors. It even had lifts. You didn't even feel like you're in a ship at all so 
guys, instead of being jobless in your home country and not being able to make ends meet, go and get the dollars. It might just change your life. And you can always come back if you don't like the experience. So most of the contracts are going to be six months on board and then you're going to have two months break. After the six months, if you don't like it, keep the money and then you just come back. And if you don't have experience, there are so many entry level positions you can consider, um, like galley attendant, you can consider um, so many jobs I've talked about. Go check my TikTok and just apply. You just never know. And those of you who are looking for um, show money for moving to Canada, this might be the easiest way to get that money. And I have shared with you guys um, about the C1 visa is one of the easiest visas you can get. And the next live, I'm going on another live because I don't want this video to be too long. Somebody, okay, I've been receiving a lot of questions. So for some reason, um, a lot of people are getting their C1D visas denied. So I want to talk about that briefly on the next live because I don't want this one to be too big. So you are welcome to come over. We are going to be talking about some of the frequently asked questions for your C1D visa. This is a visa you're going to need for your cruise ship job um, um, to go to the U.S., so i'm going to be talking about that and what to watch out for and things to keep in mind when you're applying for your visa once you get your cruise ship job so guys thank you so much um those who haven't liked the video please give it a like leave a sweet comment and share 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 sharing is caring and you just never know you might be the one that becomes somebody's destiny helper Thank you so much, guys. It was a pleasure having you here. I will see you on the next one. We are going to be looking at the C1 visa, most frequently asked questions and how you can answer them. Bye, guys.